and welcome to FOW's first virtual Valley Talk. I'm Ruffian Titman, the Executive Director of the Friends of the Wissahickon. Today, we'll be speaking with bird expert, photographer, and I'm proud to say, FOW member, Ruth Pfeffer, about the numerous bird species you can see in your backyard. Ruth, owner of Birding with Ruth, is credited with creating the birding program at the Morris Arboretum, where she is an instructor. She has led birding expeditions throughout the Mid-Atlantic region and abroad since the 1990s, contributed to the Breeding Bird Atlas Project in the 1980s, and is a member of the Delaware Valley Ornithological Club, the Academy of Natural Sciences, and the Winco Audubon Society. Happy birding! Ruth Pepper here, owner and operator of Birding with Ruth, and I've been associated with the Friends of the Wissahickon uh, proudly for over 50 years. And I birded in the Wissahickon uh, since I'm eight years old. That's how it led me to birding all these years. Welcome to my backyard. Uh, and without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, our uh, yard has been full of birds for many of years. Uh, and no matter where I go in the world, I know I'm always coming back to the Northern Cardinal. The Northern Cardinal lives within five miles of where it's born. So it's one of our resident birds year round. This is our male who's beautiful and the female on a snowy day. I put snow, we didn't have much snow this year. So I put a little snow uh, in the uh, show today and that's the female Cardinal. And they're uh, doing their courtship right now. For those of you who, uh, who can look out of your windows and enjoy your yards, your property, uh, you will hear the Cardinal doing one of his love songs every morning. Uh, and they are, are starting their courtship and they're nesting. Uh, the male cardinal, I have a deck out in my yard. I have a small property, but uh, bird feeders, which I will show you. This is our male cardinal just resting um, after getting out of one of my four bird baths. And you can see his layers of feathers, which by the way, he has to keep clean. Birds have to preen continuously. Um, so they have a lot of things they have to do every day. Uh, red belly woodpecker. Um, I have at least four woodpeckers that come to my feeders. I'm going to show you them. This is suet, a suet case. There's many kinds of suet cases you can get. You can see a little bit of his red feathers on his uh, abdomen there, and they certainly um, enjoy the suet. That is protein to birds. And so are the peanuts uh, in the peanut feeder. Uh, a friend of mine gave me the peanut feeder, oh, I guess about 20 years ago, maybe even a little longer, and it increased the bird species I had in the yard by eight species. And that's how I get all four woodpeckers. They come for the suet and the peanuts, and they're beautiful. The male woodpeckers do have red on their head, the females do not. And there's a downy, which is a female, and she's just checking out the suet case before um, before she takes her turn. Males have a way of feeding first and then the females. But when they're in love, the female goes first and, uh, and uh, then he waits his turn because most male birds are really, really good mates. Uh, Northern Flicker hops in uh, and he really just hopped all along my deck and then went to um, the deck furniture that's there, the Northern Flicker. You will see the Northern Flicker down on the ground eating grubs in the spring and in the fall. And it doesn't always go to the feeders, uh, but I've seen it on the feeder because all birds that come to your yard do not necessarily go to feeder and we could uh, to the feeders. We can say birds of the feather flock together. Um, and lots of birds like our songbirds will be on, will be start arrive, starting to arrive. Um, next month, and um, they'll, they don't go to feeders except for the pine warbler, but they do come to our yards. So, and I'm sure that we can show them another time. The hairy woodpecker, uh, the hairy looks a lot like the down. The only thing has a larger bill. You can see the, the red on its head, uh, and he is enjoying that wonderful protein. The yellow-bellied sapsucker stopped by, uh, two days ago, uh, it's on its way north. So this is a bird that you see in the spring and in the fall in our yards and in the Wissahickon and other parks that are in our area. The brown creeper, well, you can see how it blends in. I took this right through my kitchen window 
and you see his big feet, it helps him uh, go along up and down uh, the tree. He only goes in an upward motion. He never goes downward like the white-breasted nuthatch and or woodpeckers will go down. Uh, he only goes up the tree. And when he flies from this tree, he flies to another tree and he'll go from the base of the tree up and just keep doing that. And he's foraging for insects that are in between, uh, it is in between the bark of the tree. Carolina Wren is also singing right now in our yards. Tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. If you're under 50, he says cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. And what he's probing here, after he was through probing, I went out and uh, turned the shell and there was a spider webs. So he was eating uh, any of the little, uh, um, amounts of food that uh, the spider left behind. And you will see a shell in the bird bath, a bowl. And on another picture, you will see a rock because just like we're different sizes, so are birds. And this is a very large bird bath. So that's why they're in there to accommodate all size birds. And there's a Carolina Red after he took a nice little bath. And then he'll preen and clean those feathers off and just like us, uh, birds need food, shelter, and water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, robins are returning, and um, I looked over. I have a field across from me, and there were 50 robins uh, out there, <clears throat> excuse me, two days ago, because our robins are returning from Florida. The robins that were here in the wintertime are on their way back to Canada. And uh, the robins that are going to be with us in the summer uh, came here to breed. And they will do the same thing in, in the fall. They will leave to return to Florida. And the birds from Canada that, re, uh, that will breed up there, then they'll return and come and spend the winter with us. So welcome home, Robin, to our breeding ground. Yeah, uh, American goldfinches are starting um, to show their bright yellow colors and they love Niger. However, they will eat sunflower seeds. And I'll always ask the question, where are my goldfinches? And sometimes they have erratic behavior and won't come to your yards um, on, a daily, on a daily schedule. However, uh, they, will, they will return. And uh, we have to remember too that the, the, um, the feeders in our yards are only 10% of what uh, the bird's diet is. They're supposed to be in our parks. Uh, and if we have larger properties that have woodlands, uh, that's where there's um, to do the natural foods too. But uh, a lot of birds, we help a lot of birds by having the feeders out. Uh, and um, I'll show you a brighter cup goldfinch in the next picture. This is a Niger feeder. Again, it's thistle. Indigo bunting is the bird to the left. And that bird will be returning next month. Uh, they're down in Central America on their way home here. They spend their winter down in Central America. And we'll come back in our area to breed. And they will come. I've had as many as five indigo bunties in my yard at one time. And it's a beautiful bird, one of our migrants. Uh, the male American uh, goldfinch is on our right. And that's his bright breeding color uh, plumage. And um, they uh, nest in July. That's when they start their breeding, even though they get in their breeding plumage by March now. And the white-breasted nuthatch, yank, yank, yank. Now, the white-breasted nuthatch, he goes up and down. He has all different positions on the tree and loves to come to the peanut feeder, the suet, and the white-breasted nuthatch will also go to the sunflower, my hopper feeder. And you will see he has some salmon in his rump. And he can be very aggressive when other birds land on the feeder. He has a habit of flashing his uh, wings open uh, in, in to say, isn't it? That's just to say, um, uh, I'm feeding now, leave me be. Uh, and grackles, a lot of us people who, a lot of us who feed birds uh, do not appreciate the grackles coming and eating all the seed. However, that's their natural thing. They're coming in from the fields now. The fields in our area, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and you can see thousands of them when you're um, in the fields down in Delaware um, and the other areas I just mentioned. However, they do come, and I had about 150 
uh, of the grackles uh, uh, last week come to my feeders. They really cleaned me out. But it's a beautiful bird, uh, and it's it's one of our um, migratory birds. Eastern bluebird. This is a picture of bluebird on my son's property, uh, and they use these boxes uh, three years in a row. An eastern bluebird is nesting now. Has a pretty little song. Um, <clears throat> excuse me so much. And uh, and they are one of our um, one of our favorite birds. Henry David Thoreau wrote. The eastern bird, the eastern bluebird wears the sky on his back. And here's the female, not quite as bright as the male on the feeder. And they can raise two broods. Uh, what they do with the first brood, they take it, they take the fledglings um, to about 100 feet away from the first nesting spot. And what they will do, they, they will get older and then they help raise the second brood. And that's why in the fall, you will see a big flock of Eastern bluebirds, mostly related, all right? Uh, East, oh, Carolina chickadee. Chickadee dee dee dee, chickadee dee dee dee, one of our smallest birds and really feisty. If you put a new feeder out, the chickadee is probably the first bird that will find it. Uh, it's a cavity nester, but it uses old wood or holes. Um, and because you can see that tiny little bill is not made for excavation, that's for sure. And here's another little shot of it at the feeder, the hopper feeder. And you might see a little bird to the left is a tufty titmouse in the background. And you often see both of these birds together. And look for the chickadee, they're hunting now for cavities. Um, and they will use a house in your yard. Uh, I've had it, the house is um, old now, but I've had them nest in my yard um, in, in a little house uh, that I might show in another show. Cedar waxwings, one of everybody's favorite birds, are here all round. And this is another bird that has erratic behavior. Um, you will see them um, maybe a month in a row and then you won't see them for months. And they are partial to berries. And this is a service berry uh, bush that they're on. And uh, they can come in when they come into my holly, which is a native holly, they can clean it off in a day or two when there's a big flock. And so can robins do that. Lots of our, lots of our birds need berries. Uh, if you are planting, include berry bushes and hopefully you'll do native, which will be very helpful. Ruby-throated hummingbird, I put this in there because they'll be arriving in a couple of weeks. Last year, ruby-throated hummingbirds were back by April 1st. So if you are going to put your uh, hummingbird feeder out, make sure you do it in the next two weeks. Um, I have native honeysuckle, uh, and they love that. And it, the native honeysuckle is one of my favorite uh, plants that I have on my property. And there, there's a female guarding because I have wire across and beams. This is the wire uh, that's holding the honeysuckle on the beams. And she stands guard. She will not let another, not even a male, come to that honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. They just really, um, they form their territory. Ruby, uh, all hummingbirds are very, very territorial. If you have a wood duck box on your property or you're walking in a park, you might see a screech owl because they like to roost in the wood duck boxes. Uh, and another owl, who, 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 is in our area. If you have um, a property that has woods, you might be seeing the owl. Uh, this is a great horned owl. And what happens in the spring, early spring, like the leaves, when the leaves first pop out, the fledglings pop out also. And look at these two. They're absolutely amazing. Didn't they, don't they really blend into um, this tree? Uh, Alberthorpe Park is very close to me. Uh, I walk there as frequently as I can. And uh, that's where these owls, the picture, my husband took the picture and I named them. The top one uh, is a uh, standby and it's solo and small fry. You can see the little head peeking out. And most, uh, most great horn owls don't have three fledglings, but this female three years in a row had um, the great horned owls and you can see the leaves popping out. So the fledglings, as the leaves come out in the spring, so do the fledgling, the owls, they're a winter resident and a winter breeder. 
The northern mockingbird is another bird that looks for berries. And I was close to this bird and he got very, very aggressive like I was gonna take a berry. Um, the, but the, the interesting thing about a northern mockingbird, it can mimic at least 50 songs of other birds. And you can learn your bird songs uh, by uh, listening to a mockingbird. Uh, and I have a couple of them. They don't nest on my property, but a couple of them come and will sing very early in the morning. I saw a morning cloak. The morning cloak is the first butterfly that we see in the spring, and I saw it two days ago. So I decided to put it in the show, and it's really beautiful. And the reason we do see it as the first, first, uh, as the first uh, butterfly in the spring is because the, they lay their eggs on the plants in our area. So that's why we see them first. And dark-eyed juncos are in your yards now and they will be leaving. <clears throat> they also have white outer tail feathers. So when you see a flash of white, that's the dark-eyed junco and the pink bill. And there's the female uh, on one of my other bird baths, by the way, uh, very popular. You can see by the feet of some of the birds I'm showing you, and those big, on um, the big feet, they're, that's worth thrashing around on the ground. They're mainly ground feeders. Uh, and don't go to feeders much, but they are in our yards because they like to forage under leaves or, you know, in our yard debris and everything. And they're looking for seeds, by the way. Um, and fox sparrow comes down in the spring and in the fall. It's the largest sparrow on the East Coast and that really chestnut color. Uh, last uh, April, in the beginning of April, I had five fox sparrows. I think we had a late snow, um, maybe a couple of inches, and they really came through then. And what a treat to have five of them in the yard. And you can see by the big feet, sparrows have the big feet also, and um, they will thrash around on the ground uh, looking for their food, the seed. White-throated sparrows, uh, Old Sam Peabody. And the yellow are called yellow lures next to its eyes and near its medium um, crown stripe. And these birds are in our yards now, but will be leaving to go further north. This is one of our migrants that stay over uh, the winter. And um, they will go to feeders on occasion, but mostly they're really thrashing about in our yards. Uh, the reason I have, there's my rock, my shell, and my red bowl, uh, and, uh, and that's a white-throated sparrow just enjoying uh, bathing. And here he is. He has one, one foot on the rock and one foot on the shell, and uh, he's going to just shake um, the excess water out. And there he is looking at me. I'm, I have a small kitchen window uh, near my bird bath. And there's the white-throated sparrow looking back at me. What a treat. And it is a treat to feed birds and to look at the birds in your backyard. Uh, you really don't need binoculars. They come in handy sometimes. But I wish for you um, to have the sheer pleasure of enjoying our avian friends. I know um, it's a really big part of my life. And I really um, can't imagine my daily life without looking outside and enjoying my birds. And I say happy spring to you. And I thank friends of the Wissahickon for inviting me uh, to share this program with you. Happy spring, everybody, and have a good day. Ruth Pepper signing off. Thanks for watching this virtual Valley Talk. And if you're just getting started with birding from your backyard, check out the eBird app. It's easy to use and records your sightings and locations while allowing you to see what other birders are seeing in the area. You can share your findings with us with hashtag eBird, hashtag my eBird history, and hashtag Wissahickon. And of course, please consider supporting Friends of the Wissahickon's conservation mission at fow.org backslash membership. Your contribution helps us steward trails, clean the Wissahickon Creek, and educate Philadelphia about the wild and wonderful Wissahickon Valley Park.